Ooh. <laughs> well, that's a first. I haven't seen her do that before. I think she might have been sleeping. I very rudely woke her up. Okay, what you're looking at here are four enclosures belonging to my Flamingo Kylis species Achaia. Now these came from a gentleman named Steve Johnson um, who lives over in the Seattle area, which is not too far from me. Um, it's about a four and a half, five hour drive from Spokane where I live on the eastern side of the state. I came upon these after he bred them, which I think was one of the first breedings in the United States. Uh, and he was gener generous enough to give me these four when I brought my um, <coughs> Seriopagopus, let's see, it was a Seriopagopus species buck ma. I brought that one over there for a breeding loan for him with his female and uh, his female unfortunately passed away so that didn't work but he had already given me these four from his own sack and like I said that was very generous of him so I got these last fall um, it might have been in September when that happened and all four of them have done wonderfully when I brought them home they were still pretty small slings I would say they were maybe about that big and I made the decision to put them in here. I knew they couldn't get out of these holes. I made this pretty well ventilated. There's ventilation on the top and the bottom. They had a layer of this pumice rock underneath and then a layer of dirt. They each have their own plant, their own cork bark and a water bowl and so I would water you know the plant side and the water bowl keep those two on the same side of the enclosure this one you can see has excavated the pumice rock from beneath the surface and created an extensive burrow down here so this was actually a good choice uh, for an enclosure for them I wasn't particularly afraid that they would get lost and the reason I say that is that they make a little tiny web structure and you can see it um, and so it's not too hard to figure out where they are and some of them would make it um, beneath their their water bowls and you could you know lift up the water bowl if you wanted you could see that they had a burrow down there and I would make sure to put some very small um, dubias down there for them to eat when they were that tiny we were talking about something like you know a dubia like this and they would eat molt and i would know that they were fine and so they've been in these enclosures for almost a year and to me i mean that's good there's you see this uh there's a web tunnel here the other night I came into the tarantula room in the middle of the night and three of them were out and surprisingly one of them was quite large and we were looking at about that big. Um, it really stood out. I heard that it's difficult to get a female of this species so hopefully one of these four is a female. I have tried sexing them, and the one that I managed to sex a mold from is probably that big one. I think that it was a suspect male. So you can see in the background my mature male H. Mac. He is um, webbing his dubia to the the cork bark wall in his enclosure. Uh, let's see if we can get a better look at him back there. There he is. <laughs> He uh, must have matured here several months ago and I really did not ever see him until he matured. He's been very shy and now he's out of course now that he's mature. I'm going to go ahead and, and put these um, Akaya back up on the shelf because there really isn't much to see. I poke the dubia you know, down into their burrows. 
um, and let them eat. So just wanted to show you what I have had success with as far as their enclosures are concerned. This right here is Lennox. He is a suspect male, Pamphobedius species Machala. And uh, you can see over here is his plant. It's kind of a sad looking thing. This long growth indicates it's not getting enough light. Um, it is kind of on the inside. I should probably switch him around with my millipedes because they have a pothos in there and those can handle a little less light. The pothos, of course, on the corner here is doing great. So I'm going to see if this guy is hungry. He's been quite a kicker, a hair kicker, and uh, see if he'll just come out and eat. Oh yeah, there you go. He's pretty. So that's good, and, and you can see his, his abdomen is full. His abdomen is You can see his abdomen looks great. He's not missing a bunch of setae, so he has not been kicking at me, but last time he molted before this, he kicked a streak of setae off of his abdomen. So he stayed that way till his next molt. I try to be very careful, you know, not to harass him um, so that he kicks at me. In some ways, the Pamphobedias remind me of Formictopus. And the Formictopus, of course, their colors are a little more subtle. But they do look similar to me. But the Pamphobedias definitely kick a lot more hair. I would say that as beautiful as they are, Pamphobedias are one of my least favorite genuses to keep simply because of how much hair kicking. It's quite possible that the kicking subsides a bit as they age. I mean, this was nice. He's not kicking at me. And there have been times in the past where he kicked just because I moved his enclosure. So right now, I'm seeing uh, quite an improvement. Here's my millipede tank. There are three types of millipedes in here. I have these ivory millipedes. There are a couple of adults. You can see they're pretty big um, compared to the babies. The babies have been in here for, gosh, about a year now. They're still not at reached adulthood, but these are looking very nice. Um, these are probably my favorite because they don't um, secrete on me. Oh, well, they poop, but they don't secrete on me as much as some of the other species I have in here. Okay, so you can see this one's taking a nice poop on my, on my hand. I am about ready to mix their substrate up, uh, take some of their poop that's on top and mix it down into the bottom and put a bunch of calcium supplement into their substrate. They've been eating carrots and um, other matter that I put in here. They like eating this kind of a fungus that falls from the trees that I get up on a mountain here locally. I put it in the freezer for a month or a few weeks and then I feed it to them and they strip that down. They also like uh, moss and leaves and other scraps. They look pretty, pretty good right now, really healthy. The babies are looking good. They're all nice and shiny. And by the way, if you're interested in any babies and you live um, in the United States where I can ship them, I am definitely looking for homes for some of them. I think I have both males and females here. I 
think both of these large ones though I'm definitely keeping my two big ones I do believe these are both girls I think the males passed away Here, I'm talking to you with poop on my hand the others are buried in here somewhere I have the Texas millipede and I think the other ones that I have are the smoky oaks and excuse me, I'm, I don't know off the top of my head the scientific names for these. These are all from the United States. There's a bunch of springtails in there. They seem to really do well in the millipede and isopod bins. And interestingly, the babies have a bit of a... I don't know if this will go away as they get older. But they have a bit of a pink to them um, in their striping. It's a pinkish brown. The adults are darker. Some of the babies are darker as well. This one's a little darker, darker markings. Yeah, she's getting big. She looks good. What a pretty, pretty girl. I'd have to say that these definitely have grown since I got them. I mean, they looked pretty big when I got them, but they're pretty chunky now and, and very shiny. And they really do make a very good pet because they're very easy to care for. Their substrate is important, you know, it's nice to mix a bunch of stuff in there. Sometimes I bury carrots and um, into their substrate and then, of course, put the calcium supplement in there. The calcium without phosphorus. And it's okay if it has the D3 in it. They have their pothos plant in here. They don't eat it. They got some fungus gnats too. They don't eat that. They do eat, like these magnolia leaves, have some other types of leaves, and they eat bark. They chew on the bark quite a bit. Here's a piece of that. You can see how much they've eaten. And I've changed them into different enclosures a couple times, but this five gallon tank seems to be the best for them. And they're next to a window. They also like to kind of look at my my fingernails and my skin and I think they like to try to chew some of the dead skin off my hand maybe they're doing me a favor I don't know so I have them next to a window no direct sunlight but they do seem to like some light I think this one's trying to maybe bite my fingernail <laughs> and all these pretty little legs so those are both females. The smoky oaks are pretty hefty. They're overall a bigger millipede. Um, they don't come out as much. And also the Texas millipedes do, does not come out as much. And I think there's only one of those in here. It's a lot longer than these, but it's definitely not... Uh, I mean, I really like these the best after my experience with them. These are the ones, the ivories are the ones that stay out, that are out eating and more entertaining. So if you ever want to get a millipede, I recommend the ivory millipedes. As far as like the American species out of those three that I've kept. Oh, I have kept the pink legs, I think, too. Um, they didn't come out much either. So, ivory, ivories, they get an A+. Plus. Look at all that poo. So I'm going to stir this all up and make sure that goes down into the substrate. Um, and then add the calcium powder and go from there. A bowl of apples and carrots here. They've been washed and cut up. These are going to be some treats for the millipedes, for the roaches, for my mealworm bin, and for my isopods. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these pieces of carrot that are old and get this little guy off of there first and I'm going to just bury them. So there are other creatures in here who will help break those down. The uh, All right, what's this little guy doing? Okay, and then I'm gonna give them some new carrot, nice fresh carrot here. They went through those carrots pretty fast. I just gave those to them. Um, I don't even know if that was yesterday or the day before. And I'm gonna give them a nice big chunk of apple. Sometimes it's good to come back and check on this food because um, you can start to get fruit mites or, you know, other things, laying eggs in there and end up with some unwanted guests in your invertebrates room. So it's always good to remove some of the food they're not eating or at least bury it. Everyone's pretty active right now since I woke them up, but... They're so cute. Look at this cute little one. Adorable. Yes, I jumped, even though I knew what to expect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're not going to disappoint anybody, are we?